I'm here with Jimmy Weldon. So how are you today, sir? I was in a better. I couldn't stand it. And I'm going to tell you right now. I've been sitting in the audience and I'm watching this young lady talk, interview these people. And I said, I can't believe this. I'm 93 years old, Morgan. I had the first show in Dallas, Texas. In 1950, there was one TV set in every three blocks in the city of Dallas. We'd drive down the road, we'd see an antenna. Hey, they got a TV there, look. And think about it today, Morgan, there's one in every room of every home. I've seen all this happen. When I saw you interview these people and the stars that were up here on the stage, I thought, what, what a future you've got. What a future you've got. Now, you grew up with me, grew up, you're only 12. I'm the last living character in the Yogi Bear show. There's a little duck named Yaki Doodle, and his best friend is Chopper, a great big bulldog. Fibber Fox is chasing him down the road, and you hear him holler, Help! Chopper! Chopper's right today! And he says, Run, little fella! Get to the front of him. Chopper looks down and says, Yaki, now that you're safe, tell me, where is your mama? The little duck always looks up sad and says, I don't have your mama. Would you be my mama? Morgan, I did that 57 years ago for Hanna-Barbera. Now, that's a shocker, I know, and that's why I said I want to talk to that young lady because you don't realize what a future you have as an interviewer and everything. Man, 93, you, you, I can't last it too long, but I'd like to be around and watch your future because, golly, what a personality, what a trait of what you can do. Oh I mean it with all my heart. You're going to make me cry tears of joy. No. Well, all right, that's okay. I, I'm a oh speaker. Oh, my gosh. I'm a speaker now. I speak to children all over uh, Los Angeles area about America. I did. I was in Patton's Third Army Combat Engineers in World War II, and I did a special thing which was used on the USS Kennedy in the Persian Gulf during the Iraq War. And they called me and told me they were being used. And it was used, and I cried. Couldn't help it. But I told the young people in, Bur in Burbank Middle School that I was in Patton's Army and that we liberated Booking Wall concentration camp. A little boy your age said, eh, that never happened in, the, in middle school. And I said, don't say that. I was there. And he just backed up against the wall. Later, I talked to the largest Lions Club in Long Beach. A little man came out of the audience with a yarmulke on the back of his head. He said, Jimmy, I'm Rabbi Kane. I was at Booking Wall concentration camp. We stood there hugging, crying in the middle of the room. I called my friend who's in Palm Springs today. He was the top writer for United Press International. That was the biggest network news in the world. It doesn't even exist anymore. And he said, I said, what's happening to our country? He said, you've got to get a little 501c3 nonprofit corporation and talk to schools about America. And that's what I'm doing right now. I'm telling the story mainly of Francis Scott Key, how he wrote a poem that became our national anthem. Oh, I learned about him last year. Uh, that's right, that's right. And when you hear, do you know this? Do you do the, know the story about him, Francis Scott Key? I do. I've heard of him a couple of times. All right, but I mean, you know, he's a poet, and he was he's the one that did the exchange for prisoners with Admiral Cochrane on a boat. Yeah, and I tell the story of that with the young people, and they say, oh, golly. When, they, when you think about the way he wrote that poem, because he saw the patriots up there holding a the flag up. They had died because the, Admiral Cochrane said, as soon as they bring that flag down over there, you're going to, we'll know that you've surrendered and you're once more under British rule. I'm, I'm tearing this all up, but I mean, if you remember it. And uh, when he saw those patriots with the flag, they were dead, dead holding the flag up. That's when he took his pen out, looked up and he said, oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars oh the perilous flight fight or the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there that's a poem that belongs to america and when you hear someone sing it, I remember Roseanne Barr, she sang a song and said, Oh, say, can you see? Like she's on drugs or something. I thought, this is horrible. We've got to keep our song. That's America's favorite poem. And that's the Star Spangled Banner. Morgan, I'm so proud of you. Hey, thanks for letting me talk to you. Thank you so You're... much for talking with me. This is so inspirational. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. God bless you.
God bless you too. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.